In this video, we're going to be applying our knowledge of molecular polarity and intermolecular forces in order to understand several of water's behaviors. If we analyze the polarity of water, we can recognize that the oxygen on water has two lone pairs, while the hydrogens have none, making the oxygen have a stronger negative pole than the hydrogens. If we add electronegativity to our analysis, we also recognize that oxygen has a much stronger attraction for electrons than hydrogen does, meaning that the electrons in the bonds are going to be pulled towards oxygen, enhancing the negative pole from the lone pairs on oxygen and giving the hydrogens positive poles. Based on this analysis, it's pretty obvious that water is a polar molecule and therefore that water is able to form intermolecular attractions between the opposite poles on different molecules like this. And if you remember the different types of intermolecular forces, you will recognize these as hydrogen bonds because we have an attraction between a hydrogen that is bonded to an oxygen attracting to an oppositely charged oxygen on another water molecule. Now, hydrogen bonding is very important because it is this phenomenon that explains a large number of water's chemistry and behavior when interacting with other substances, the first of which is a phenomenon that we call cohesion. So if we break apart this word, we can tell by the prefix co, the same prefix as in cooperative, that we are dealing with water's interaction together. Well, what exactly are we looking at? Cohesion is the phenomenon uh, that occurs when water sticks to or when it attracts to other water molecules. So when water sticks to itself. So this hydrogen bonding that we've drawn between these water molecules here are an example of cohesion at the chemical level, and this explains why water moves as a single unit when it is poured in a process that we call flow. In other words, when one water molecule moves, the attraction that it has through a hydrogen bond with another water molecule pulls the next water molecule with the first one and to the next and to the next and so on. And this is what we call the flow of water. However, hydrogen bonding allows water to stick to more than just itself. When we have water sticking to other substances, this phenomenon is what we call adhesion. So adhesion is when water sticks to or forms attractions with other substances that are not water, such as the tips of these pine needles that we see, or such as the threads of spider silk that we see in this picture here. Now, if we look at these two pictures at the chemical level, we would see something like this. So the surface of plant leaves, meaning the outside of plant cells, are made of a complex chemical that we call cellulose, while the threads of spider silk that we see here are actually made out of a very specific type of silk protein. And we can see that both of these substances are polar. So if we take a look at the bottom of the cellulose molecule, we can see oxygens bonded to hydrogen just like in water, meaning that because of oxygens having greater lone pairs or asymmetrical lone pairs than carbon or hydrogen and having a higher electronegativity, we're going to get negative poles on the oxygens here and positive poles on the hydrogens, which allows water to form hydrogen bonds with the oppositely charged poles in cellulose. Likewise, if we take a look at the structure of a protein, we see that this oxygen is bonded to a carbon, meaning that this oxygen is going to have a negative pole, again because it having asymmetrically distributed lone pairs and a higher electronegativity than carbon. And likewise, these hydrogens bonded to this nitrogen here are going to have a positive pole, again allowing water to form hydrogen bonds with the oppositely charged pole in this silk protein. 
So because both cellulose and silk protein are polar substances, water can adhere, this is the verb form of adhesion, to each of these substances by forming hydrogen bonds. Now, any substance that is polar that can therefore form hydrogen bonds with water, we call by the adjective hydrophilic. So if we break down this word to understand its meaning, we can obviously recognize the prefix hydro referring to water, whereas philic is derived from the Greek word philios, which means to like or to admire. So polar substances are defined as hydrophilic because they like being around water because they can form hydrogen bonds and cause water to adhere to the substance. However, as we recognize from this image here, where we see oil being added to water, and we can clearly see that the oil and the water are forming two separate layers, and even if you were to shake this beaker and disrupt the oil, most of these oil bubbles would float back up to the top and stay separated. So here we can clearly see that oil does not like water, and looking at the chemical structure of oil, it's relatively easy to see why. If we look at the tail of this molecule here, we recognize that it is made entirely of carbon and hydrogen. Now, neither of these elements have a large electronegativity, nor do either of them have lone pairs, which means on this long hydrocarbon chain, there's no center of this molecule that is able to hold onto negative charge the way that an oxygen molecule is able to. So we can classify this section here as being non-polar, meaning that this section is not able to form hydrogen bonds with water, and therefore we say that it dislikes, or uh, more scientifically, that it fears water. Uh, the reason why we use the word fear there is because a substance that is not able to hydrogen bond with water is defined as hydrophobic, and phobic is derived from the Greek word phobia, meaning fear. For example, arachnophobia is a fear of spiders, but hydrophobia would be a fear of water, which oil definitely is because of its inability to hydrogen bond with it. The final characteristic we want to understand about water is something that we call specific heat capacity. Now, specific heat capacity is a measurement that measures the amount of heat that must be absorbed by a substance in order to increase its temperature by one degree Celsius. So if we were to take a look at liquid water, for example, and let's say that our liquid water is 24 degrees Celsius, if we want to heat up that water in order to make it 25 degrees Celsius, this amount of heat to raise water's temperature by exactly one degree Celsius is water's specific heat capacity. And compared to other substances that are of a similar size and atomic mass, water has an unusually high specific heat capacity, meaning that it takes much more heat to increase water's temperature compared to other substances of similar mass. And lo and behold, the reason that explain that is because of hydrogen bonding. So if we take a look at ice, for example, hydrogen bonding keeps water molecules close together to each other. So we can see the hydrogen bonds formed between these water molecules in ice, and it's the hydrogen bonding that prevents water from melting until the temperature exceeds zero degrees Celsius. This is the temperature at which ice melts. Uh, likewise, if we were to look at liquid water, we know that liquid water exists in liquid form, so hydrogen bonding is going to keep liquid water molecules flowing together as a liquid until the temperature gets greater than 100 degrees Celsius, at which water becomes water vapor, which is the gaseous or gas form of water. So the simple reason why this is, is increasing temperature increases the 
kinetic energy. Remember that the word kinetic is just simply a word that means movement. So whenever in we increase the temperature of water, this increases how fast water molecules are moving, meaning that hotter water molecules move faster. And if the molecules are moving faster, that means that the molecules are also going to move farther away from each other. And by the time water becomes a gas, the water molecules are moving too quickly and are too far apart from each other for hydrogen bonds to be able to form. So the farther away water molecules get from each other, that must mean that the hydrogen bonds are going to become weaker as multiple water molecules move farther away from each other, thereby preventing hydrogen bonds from forming. In the next video, we're going to look at the functions of water that exist within different organisms, including humans. Until then, take a look at these practice problems here and see if you can identify from the structures that exist whether these substances displayed here are hydrophobic or hydrophilic.